A new twist came on the federal court case of Proposition 8 when attorneys for the anti-gay marriage proponents filed a claim to throw out Judge Von Walker's ruling that the proposition was unconstitutional. Attorneys for the proponents claim that the judge's 10-year relationship with another person of the same gender would not make him impartial to the case. And so sadly, they brought a motion today that said that Judge Walker should be disqualified from being able to hear this case simply because he's a gay man who was in a relationship. Um, and the motion really has no basis. Over eight months after declaring unconstitutional the democratic decision of over 7 million Californians, to reaffirm traditional marriage, Judge Walker publicly revealed that he has been involved in a committed same-sex relationship for over 10 years. Instead of revealing these facts to the parties and their counsel, Judge Walker kept them to himself, even though the subject matter of the case presented an issue in which Judge Walker and his partner had a direct interest. Judge Walker's course of conduct in this case heightens the appearance of partiality. When judges rule on cases in which they possess a substantial and direct personal interest, there can be no justice. And when judges fail to disclose all relevant facts concerning the potential interest they may possess in the outcome of a case and permit the appearance of partiality, the entirety of our judicial process is undermined. Judge Walker's decision must be vacated and reconsidered by a neutral judge who has no direct and substantial personal interest in the outcome, and whose impartiality cannot be reasonably questioned, as required by federal law. Only then can the court ensure that this case will be decided in accordance with the high standards that apply to the judicial process. Proponents argued that because Judge Walker was in a long-term relationship, then the issue of his intent to marry was applicable. Judge Ware said that there were no facts showing that Judge Walker wanted to get married, other than being in a long-term relationship. After lengthy questioning by Judge Ware, proponents' attorney Charles Cooper admitted that if Judge Walker didn't want to get married, then there would be no bias. The intervening defendant's homophobic and bigoted motion, I think, will prove to be a real low point in American civil rights history. But it's our hope that Judge Ware's opinion and the ultimate decision in the issue that's before us today will end up proving to be a positive turning point and erase this dark spot uh, that was put upon us uh, by the intervening defendants today. It harkens back to the days of the trial of Dan White for the murder of Harvey Milk because in that trial they excluded the jurors who were gay simply because they were gay. And it's the sort of tactic that has been used against racial minorities, against women, against people of various religious faiths, to try to stereotype them, to try to marginalize them when they're jurors or judges. And we're very hopeful that this tactic will not work in this case. This motion is a frivolous, offensive motion. It was deeply unfortunate that the proponents decided to file this motion. In some ways, though, it's not surprising because throughout the civil rights history of our country, when uh, judges from a minority group have sat on a case where there was an equal protection claim or some issue that related to the rights of that minority group, litigants have tried this trick. They've tried to knock the judge off the case because of their status as a minority. And each and every time throughout our history, the courts have rejected those attempts. We're very hopeful that Chief Judge Ware will do that in, in denying this motion. Within 24 hours, Chief Judge James Ware rejected proponents' claim that gay judges are less capable of impartiality, stating that their arguments relied on mere speculation and assumption. The next chapter in the case of Perry v. Schwarzenegger will be at the California Supreme Court in September, where justices will decide on whether the proponents of Proposition 8 have legal standing to appeal the case. In San Francisco, this is Raymond Donald Hong for Outlook Video.